Michael Romano, Oregon trial attorney here. I took um, delivery of my Tesla Model 3 dual motor all-wheel drive this past Saturday and I wanted to throw up a video real quick for anyone else who's in a position similar to where I was at maybe two weeks ago and that is trying to decide between the performance dual motor and the standard dual motor. And for the purposes of this video, because things are gonna change over time, and in my opinion, Tesla hasn't been super clear about the designations for the models in terms of what we're supposed to call these things. Like for example, on a Tesla forum I'm on, there's a big debate as to whether or not the Tesla Model 3 is should be called the M3 or if that's invading on BMW. So there's a debate going on about that stuff. I tend to call the, uh, the Tesla Model 3 with the dual motor the 3D. I think that's kind of clever, kind of cute. Um, uh, sort of like a 3D movie, three dimensions. And um, the, the, I would call the performance version of the dual motor the P3D. Um, I think it gets a little bit confusing because uh, next year when they have the standard range battery, uh, there's going to be a different designation there. I don't know what they'll call that. Um, right now, a lot of people are calling the 3, the 3LR three for long range. And so next year, I guess it'll be a SR for standard range. So anyway, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to refer to it as the difference between the 3D and the P3D. Um, and then there's the rear wheel drive version that, of course, doesn't have the dual motor. Uh, and there is no performance version of the standard rear wheel drive. I don't think there ever will be based on all the press reports and you know Tesla fans that have been talking about different models that are to come. So one other thing about this video before I kind of give you my thoughts on the difference between the 3D and the P3D is that I'm sorry to disappoint if you're expecting a video where I'm going to accelerate real hard 0 to 60 I'm not going to do that. I mean, I certainly can if there's a stoplight, I'll show you. But I don't think those videos actually are super helpful. They're exciting, um, and I understand why people film them, especially with the ludicrous mode, which really throws you back in your seat. But you really don't understand the difference in terms of acceleration until you get into the car and actually try it in all two or all three of the models. And I'll explain that in a minute. Because I understand, I've seen those videos and they are exciting. You see somebody go from zero to 60 and they kind of woo and holler and that, that's pretty cool. But it really is different when you actually get in the car and you accelerate. And I'm speaking from experience on that because I have test driven a Model S uh, performance version, an X performance version. The, um, I've test driven the performance version of the three and the rear wheel drive of the three, and then also the dual motor, uh, standard uh, dual motor uh, model three. So I've compared them all kind of side by side. What I ended up doing myself, I actually had a reservation for a standard dual motor uh, 3D, and I was changing around my configuration like crazy because I started off with red, and a black interior and then I said no I want a white interior once that became available in the standard dual mo motor configuration and then I changed it to white because my wife really wanted a white car and a white interior and then bottom line I ended up coming back full circle to what I initially started with and that was a midnight silver metallic exterior with the arrow wheels and a black interior standard dual motor. That's what I'm in right now. That's what I ultimately decided upon. Um, and my reasoning for doing that, I, I went, while I was waiting to take delivery of this, I didn't have a VIN number yet. I could technically change it. I had driven by the Tesla service center on McAdam in, in downtown Portland. And nobody, I didn't get an email or anything. It was just by dumb luck. I happened to be driving by. I, I live relatively close to the service center. And so I drove by the, uh, the, the parking lot and noticed that they had a red, white interior uh, performance model there. And I had already scheduled to do a test drive of the Model X because I wanted to make sure that I was getting the right car for my family. The Model X was actually kind of in play. Um, and so what I did is I said, hey, could you guys take that performance version 
and could, could we throw that into the mix on Sunday so I can drive that too? And so the, 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 the guy that was helping me at the service center was really great. It was kind of after hours. He let me drive a rear wheel drive Model 3, the performance version of the Model 3, and then the X, all kind of around the same time. So I got to really compare all the different versions there. And then I had driven the S at a different time. So here's my impression, and thanks for your patience in getting all that background, but I wanted to kind of tell you where I'm coming from and what I had, the experience I had up to the point of driving these. There is a pretty nice little circuit you can do from the McAdam dealer, uh, from the McAdam uh, service center. And so when we went out with the rear wheel drive Model 3, this was the first time I'd gotten to drive one. I'd sat in one and fooled around with it, but this is the first time I actually got to drive one. It was exhilarating as is, just standard rear wheel drive, no dual motor. Um, it had thrilling acceleration. And I say this as a guy who, I've never owned any real exotic cars, but I've had a couple of Subaru WRXs, and those are no slouch. Those are, you know, zero to 60 in five seconds. And I have, uh, in, I've been able to rent a couple of Lamborghinis, excuse me, uh, yeah, two Lamborghinis. I've been able to rent three Ferraris. Um, I have been in a uh, been able to, to ride and test drive a, a Bentley Supersports, uh, Audi R8. Um, trying to think of what else. There were some other things in the mix, but the bottom line is I've been able to drive some relatively nice cars with decent acceleration, and. The, in my opinion, the Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive holds its own with those other kind of cars. Now, it's not going to beat uh, you know, a Ferrari in 0 to 60, but what I'm saying is I don't think the average driver is going to get into a Model 3 and sort of rear-wheel drive and say to themselves, oh, if only this car had a little more punch. Uh, that's not going to happen. It, it's quick enough, it's dangerous enough that I frankly think we're going to see some people driving off the road and into trees and phone poles, uh, uh, telephone poles. So I think it's got plenty of zip, plenty of acceleration. The other thing that's interesting is the handling. Uh, the Again, the, there's a nice little circuit you can do from the uh, Portland Service Center where you can get on some twisties on Terwilliger Boulevard and provided that you don't have grandma in front of you uh, or a dump truck, you can actually, without being reckless or dangerous, you can get up to some pretty good speed to get an idea of what it'll do around corners and it felt great. Um, it feels like a sports car. Uh, it reminded me, actually, the car that I would compare it to is not these Ferraris and Lamborghinis or anything like that, because those are, admittedly, in a whole different performance uh, level. But to me, the, the rear-wheel drive Model 3 felt like a Mazda Miata. And, um, and that, pe people may say, well, what the hell does that mean? But I had a lot of fun. My dad owned a Mazda Miata, and say what you will about the acceleration or the, you know, the horsepower, that is a fun car on a Saturday or a Sunday when the weather's nice, you put the top down, you find a go windy, you go find a windy road and you have a blast. That's what that car is all about. Uh, another car that I thought it felt a lot like was I used to have a, when they renewed the uh, Mini Coopers, I had a supercharged Mini Cooper, the, I think they called it the S, and uh, this zero to 60 time on that was, it was relatively fast, but it wasn't anything like, you know, it's no drag, uh, drag racing, uh, top fuel dragster. But um, that was another car where you just say, you know what, don't overanalyze the figures, get in the car, go find some windy roads, and watch your smile come out of the shadows. I mean, it's just that kind of car. It's like a, a Pembroke Welsh Corgi of cars, right? Uh, you can't help but smile. So, uh, so that was the standard three rear wheel drive, okay? That was my initial impression. And then we got into the performance version, the P3D. And setting aside the interior, I do think the white interior is very sharp, and uh, it is, it's just very crisp. It looks like a spaceship. Uh, and by the way, I want to mention something about the dash, because a lot of people have, haven't sat in the performance version, or even if they have, they're wondering what that dash material is made of, um, because it is a white panel. Not, it's not wood grain on the performance version when you get the, or I, sh I should say, actually, even if you've got a non-performance version, if you get the white interior, the panel changes from a wood to a, a plasticky type of material. I would say it's tasteful though. Um, the Tesla rep that I was working with, I actually got three different answers as to what that material is. 
Uh, somebody said it was aluminum coated with paint. Somebody said it was plastic or polymer. And then somebody said it was wood coated with some sort of material. Um, I think based on the consensus that I've got from everybody who's tapped on it, looked at it and touched it, is it is a polymer, but it is tastefully done. It is a matte coating. It's not very shiny, so it doesn't look cheap. Um, I will say, in my opinion, it's a little boring. I'd rather it be carbon fiber. That's what I really want in terms of a long dash panel. Uh, I ended up getting the wood because that was what was available. But um, So anyway, going back to the white interior, it's gorgeous. The um, As far as the performance, uh, you can look online and see all the nerdy little details about what you get in the performance version. Uh, there are different calipers for the brakes. I think the disc uh, is actually different. You get larger wheels. They're a 21 inch, a 20 inch uh, sport wheel. I think the rubber that's on them is high performance. It's a little bit softer and better for uh, for uh, summer performance. And there might be some other things I'm forgetting. There's a there's some trim on the back, like a piece of carbon fiber that you put on your uh, on your uh, uh, trunk lid. But uh, that's basically it. There's not a whole lot of other differences. It's not like they they decked out like on, for example, the WRX, the Subaru. They give you carbon fiber inserts and red stitching and stuff like that on the interior. They don't do that with the Tesla performance model, at least not now with the interior package. So let's get to how it feels to drive it. The funny thing is we come out of the service center and what do you know, but we've got grandma in front of us, so we can't do a zero to 60 right out of the dealership, right out of the lot. Um, but we're able to go on, on Terwilliger Boulevard. I waited a little bit so that we could get a car to get out of our way so we had some distance. And I was able to throw it into the corners a little bit. I would say the difference between the rear wheel drive standard Model 3 and the performance version is not night and day. It is lowered about a half of an inch according to all the specs I've read online. It's not like they dropped it two or three inches, but a half an inch they did drop it. It does feel a little bit tighter. The suspension feels a little bit stiffer. Not punishing, but I mean, it feels a little bit tighter. Um, keep in mind, I'm coming from a Subaru WRX, so I'm already used to sport suspension, and I feel every little tiny bump. And so to me, it was not objectionable. I think if you're coming from a Cadillac Eldorado 1970 convertible, uh, you know, a boat, uh, or let's say a Lexus, where you feel like you're sitting on a couch, uh, you know, while you're driving, I think you're going to be a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit jarring for you. But for me, it was it was welcome. I liked the the feeling. So, anyway, the as far as going into the corners, I got that uh, performance introduction before I got to do the yeehaw, you know, zero to sixty, right? So, my impression in the corners was it felt a little bit. Um, tighter suspension and it felt good in the corners, but it was not night and day. It was not like, oh, can I please pay $10,000, $20,000 more for that extra feeling in the corners? It was not like that. Uh, my impression was it wasn't that different. Now then, so when we got to a straightaway and I was able to do the zero to 60, uh, it is noticeably faster. I mean, you feel like an extra kind of pushback in your seat. Um, I haven't been able to drive a Model S with ludicrous mode, so I don't have that comparison. But the one thing I would say about the performance version versus the rear-wheel drive standard version is this. This is the best way I can describe it, and it'll only be helpful to those of you who have ridden this ride. Six Flags Magic Mountain um, in Valencia, California has a ride called Superman Escapes, or Superman's Escape. And basically the ride is a straight track where it accelerates from, from zero to God knows what, and then it goes straight up in the air, and then you see Superman, like a, uh, like a statue of Superman, towering above you, and then the ride comes back down slowly, and then, you, uh, and then you come back down along the straightaway. So basically, the thrill of the ride is going from zero to like 100 miles per hour in a split second, and, and, then, you're, and then you accelerate up. And so that's a little bit of an exaggeration in terms of how the P3D felt. But it's very similar to what I've heard people describe with ludicrous mode. You basically get pinned back in your seat, and it's, the thrill of it is the G-forces, you know, backwards. So for me, the difference between the standard Model 3 and the P3D in acceleration 0 to 60 was noticeable. If you were to look at a piece of paper or look online, it's a second difference, maybe a second and a half. 
Um, so it doesn't seem like much, but it does feel different. Uh, I'll give you that. And it, it was very exhilarating. You kind of lose your stomach a little bit and it's like, it's, it's definitely a thrill. Now, so let me fast forward to why I didn't get the P3D, given how exciting that all sounds. I did the math and for me, without getting into the weeds here on the, you know, the wheels and stuff like that. For me, I think the arrow wheels look best with a midnight silver metallic, and I don't think the arrow wheels look that great on the other colors. I think it looks okay on black, but I don't think, for example, the arrow wheels look good on white. That's my personal opinion. So I kind of was starting almost like with my wheel choice first, and then color of vehicle second, and then the interior fell into place. And for my, in my opinion, you get the arrow wheels, you got to get midnight silver metallic. And then you got to get a black interior because I think a white interior on a dark colored car looks strange. That's my personal opinion. So bottom line is when I configured what I ended up getting and then I looked at getting the P3D, it was $18,000 more. And that's not including the $3,000 deposit on the full self-driving software, which I went ahead and did when I ordered my, when I finally configured what I ended up getting. So it's $18,000, maybe even as much as $21,000 difference between the P3D and what I ended up getting. And, and one other thing I need to mention is that would have included in the P3D a white interior, which I didn't get here. So the math kind of changes depending on if you're comparing apples and oranges or apples and apples. But let's just go with the $18,000 figure. I, I had a talk with my wife and I thought about it a lot and I said for $18,000, do I? how important is it for me to feel that every you know stoplight, right? Every time I get on the freeway. And I'm a guy who came from, I had a sport bike when I was younger. I've owned some nice uh, Subaru WRXs with some pretty decent acceleration, tight suspension. So um, I'm not quite ready, even though I've got a kid and I've got a wife, I'm not ready to sort of give up thrills in life, right? But the analysis for me was, is, eight, is it worth $18,000 to have that little extra acceleration and that little subtle difference when you go into corners on, on some twisties? And for me, ultimately, and my wife agreed, you know, she's the one really that talked me into it and said, you don't need to spend that kind of money for that little bit of extra performance. So kind of a long video to explain that, but um, I've had some people, I had a gentleman I just met with on Sunday who wanted to try my... Uh, P, uh, my 3D, excuse me, because he was thinking about the P3D. And so I think there's a lot of people out there that are actually in the same predicament I am, and that is, geez, do I get the 3D, which is pretty quick acceleration, or do I get the, the, the P3D, 3D versus the P3D? And uh, I think it's a tough decision, and I wanted to explain my reasoning, so if it's helpful to anybody else, I may save you $18,000, or I may have just wasted your time in explaining something that you don't care about. Two other things to say real briefly. Number one, if you are young and you are wealthy, uh, you don't have any kids, you don't have a wife, or you don't have somebody that, you know, uh, I'm, you're not a family man or family, you know, woman yet, um, and you got some money to burn, get the P3D and have some fun. At the very least, we are brand ambassadors, every one of us that drives an electric vehicle. And I like telling people, this isn't your grandpa's golf cart. These suckers are fast, they're fun, and they can hold their own with the best. I mean, the P3D is going to be, there's already some stuff with the standard uh, uh, all-wheel drive model, you know, beating some Mustangs and Porsches. I love that stuff. That's kind of exciting because it lets people know that electric cars are here, they're serious, they mean business, um, and that you don't have to be driving a Toyota Pius, um, you know, and, and going 45 miles an hour everywhere. You can actually uh, show some acceleration and some performance. The, uh, so my recommendation, if you're young and you still you know, want some excitement in your life, by all means, get the P3D. It's, it's not like you're going to feel like you've thrown away money. It is an exciting car. The second thing that I would mention, and this is really important, uh, in my opinion, because I just talked to somebody, like I said on Sunday, who was uh, giving me some really good feedback and I was glad to meet with him and his wife and their family because they were sort of deciding between the 3D and the P3D. The difference between the 3D and the standard 3, meaning the, dual, the single motor versus the dual motor, the, the real difference between the two, it's only about a half of a second, maybe even less than that, in terms of the 0 to 60 times. And then, of course, if you're on ice or snow or in rain, maybe there's going to be better traction with the dual motor. We'd hope that that's the case, right, with all-wheel drive. Um, so if you just look at the numbers, though, 
the difference between the rear wheel drive and the dual motor all wheel drive is very subtle. It's less than a half of a second. But here's the thing that I noticed a little bit and then this guy that I met with on Sunday really noticed and so did his wife is when you go to pass somebody on the freeway, so the, the 45 to 70 mile an hour acceleration or the 45 mile an hour to 60 mile an hour acceleration, that is where you really notice the dual motor. Because when you wanna pass somebody uh, on the freeway and you're going 45, 55 miles an hour and you stab it and steer on the dual motor, on the, the 3D, it really giddy up. I mean, it's got some giddy up. Um, you can accelerate very quickly. Now, I don't have numbers to give you. I'm sure somebody, um, you know, there's some real nerdy engineers uh, that love Teslas that probably posted that information so you can look it up. But all I can tell you is more of the shoot from the hip analysis. I've been doing a lot of testing of my car since I got it on Saturday. Today is Tuesday. I've been driving every chance I can. I've been accelerating and trying different things. I'm trying, obviously, the, uh, the assisted driving at this point. Um, my observation is that it is unlike any car that I've ever owned in terms of being able to get where you want to be on the freeway. And I don't mean that in some sort of reckless, douchebag kind of driving on the highway, like you're zipping in and out of traffic, cutting people off, being a real jerk. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that you're on the freeway and you kind of notice that there's a slowdown coming up ahead of you and you look over to your right and you see that there's a, an opening and you decide you want to change lanes, but you're not sure if you can do it safely because somebody is coming up. So it, it, it's, it really is a practical form of acceleration that it is there. And I appreciate that in the dual motor. And the bottom line is I'm tickled that I chose the dual motor. I could have had my re standard rear wheel drive single motor much faster. I was patient, I was a good boy. I just waited and waited and waited. Um, and finally, I was able to take delivery of the dual motor and I'm really happy I did because I've now driven the single motor, standard rear wheel drive. Obviously, I'm driving now the dual motor and I've been able to compare them side by side. Um, I think that the dual motor is a little bit quicker. It's very subtle. You, you may not even notice it in terms of zero to 60, but where you do notice it is when you're on the freeway or, or you wanna just sort of uh, step on it when you're already traveling, that is where the difference is noticeable. So, long video, uh, but I hope that that provides you with some information. Um, one thing that's been real helpful to me along this journey in getting my Tesla, because I waited a really long time, 856 days, the only thing that makes it worthwhile, or I mean, one of the big things that makes it worthwhile is you get a quality product at the end, and that's very exciting. But the other thing is the community of Tesla owners is awesome. Um, I think the only other community that really compares is the Nest, uh, Nissan Leaf owners. Man, they will go out of their way to help you in any way they can, providing you information, talking your ear off. And so I really appreciate that about the Tesla community. They do the same thing. And there have been a bunch of people who have offered me to come drive their car, use their referral code, come check out their car, sit in the interior. Uh, like I said, I just met with a family on Sunday because they wanted to try this car out before they finally configure what they're going to get. So that is the, that's really my reasoning behind making this video is to help you maybe if you're on the fence between the P3D and the 3D. Uh, hopefully this information is helpful to you. Uh, safe travels and uh, whatever you get, if it's a Model 3, you're going to love it.